All right, it's Monday night again. It doesn't look like night. We have a great guest uh, who is an agent, a voiceover agent, Ilko Drozdowski. And he's a seasoned agent. Seasoned, with lots of pepper on him, from what I understand. A Hollywood agent. A Hollywood voiceover. voiceover agent. And we're going to ask him all about what agents do and how to approach agents and stuff like that. Plus, we have a tech update. Tech update. I've got a couple of videos, as I promised, from NAB. Cool. A little bit off the ranch of what we normally talk about. But, you know, I thought some of you might be interested in broadcast consoles. All right. <laughs> All right. Also, I'm going to tell you about a little tip about something called O Drive. Okay. O. All right, and and we'll talk a little bit about when you got to move. Mm-hmm. So we can have some suggestions for you on that. Okay. All coming up right now on Voiceover Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology, and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. S. 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 That is one strange echo. I'm sorry. You know, I heard the coolest echo on a really? hike. Was that Ella a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Going up uh, this canyon, canyon called Hondo Canyon. Hondo Canyon. Hondo Canyon. Yeah. Um, it was so awesome because you got the initial... Yeah. Echo, yeah, with which was maybe two seconds, mm-hmm. and then if you waited and really listened, you got another one way off in the distance. It must have been three seconds, four seconds. It was, I'm waiting. it was a lot of fun. The littlest things are entertaining when you have a nine year old, so I, well, I, that sounds cool too. <laughs> we had a blast. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I spent the weekend above Malibu. Oh, good, looking down a nice another a nice day re- above ground. Uh, yes, uh, always a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but way, way above Malibu. Yeah. Well, that was that was a lot of fun and it's uh God, it's gorgeous there. The weather here is just fabulous. But I hear the weather back east isn't so bad today either. It's finally catching up. Yeah. The the missus is back in Buffalo and she's mm-hmm. like, It's seventy five degrees. That's good to hear. Yeah. Mac because Maxine was scraping ice and snow off her car just three days ago in Buffalo. That's not then, Buffalo. Boulder. It starts with a B. Yeah. Boulder. I'll bet you Maxine's never even been to Buffalo. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if she has. Okay. Because she's, she's we'll have worked, to find that out. And worked all over the world. All right. Well, tonight, yeah. our guest is Ilko Drozdowski, and he is an, a, a voiceover agent. This is a mystery to people. People don't understand exactly what agents do, except the people who have really good agents, and they just do what they do, and they show up, and right. they, they have jobs. The right. rest of us are all, like, pounding the door with these guys and saying, hey, will you represent me? Mm-hmm. Let's find out a little bit more about that and what it really means and, and how to really get an agent and how to work with an agent. So Ilko right will be on. joining us at about 6.30 Pacific time, 9.30 Eastern time, and 8.30 Central, 7.30 Mountain time. <laughs> so, and that would be 10 o'clock Newfoundland? No, that would be, yeah, it would be 10 o'clock Newfoundland hey. time. 
And 10 o'clock in Newfoundland. Eh? Apparently, I learned that Australia also has half a, a half hour time zone yeah, as well. It's, it, it avoids confusion for people who can't tell time in the first place. <laughs> anyway, it's now time for... Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. All right, it's the voiceover extra news for April 23rd, 2018. Three networking strategies. Are you a wallflower at networking events? Like, y- you know you should go meet people at local business events, meet and learn from colleagues at voiceover gatherings. But face it, you're shy. Lots of us are. And maybe that's why it's so appealing to do our work behind a microphone and behind closed doors. But it's said that 80% of your job is really marketing, which means meeting people. Now, Paul Stefano, who's now in the doghouse, has been at this for more than 20 years. Yet he can still look back and realize that everything we need to know about networking at these events, we've already learned in high school. Hmm. Well, in other words, you already knew it. In a new article now on VoiceOver Extra, Paul reminds us how easy it can be with three strategies. Number one, the wingman or the wing person. Find somebody to attend the event with you. There's safety in numbers. It's the same way you traveled around your high school dance with either your best buddy or closest girlfriend. Here's how it works. Uh, you can be the initiator of the conversation. You start a conversation, then shortly into the conversation, you say, Hey, do you know my friend John? Now you've both been introduced. Or you can use your friend as the reason for the introduction. Mm -hmm. Approach somebody you don't know and say, Hi, I want to introduce Jane. I think you two could help each other. The beauty of this approach is that the end result is that three people now know each other. Mm. Number two, the drive-by. You know this one too. Find somebody you want to talk to near the exhibit table or the bar Casually walk up and say, Hi, I'm Steve. I was headed to the vendor area. Care to join me? Sometimes the answer is yes. I was just about to go myself. Or, of course, sometimes the answer is no. But you have still planted the seed of the introduction. Which brings us to the third strategy. The mole. Now, this sounds sinister, but it's really not. You pick a colleague, probably someone you know who already has a connection at the event, and send them on a reconnaissance mission. When the colleague enters a conversation, you show up. Voila! Paul guarantees these strategies will help you with confidence at networking events, and they'll greatly increase the number of your business contacts. Good luck and check out more details about the strategies in this article, plus many hundreds more at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Lovely. I know. I'm not a waffle hour at parties. But sometimes, you know, you you go to a party where there's no voiceover people. So what I'll usually tell them is, is I'm an astrophysicist at JPL. And then pray that somebody there is not an astrophysicist at JPL. (laughs) And then I met some people who were from JPL, and they said, that's really funny. You should do that. Well, see, that works. (laughs) And it works. You can't really go wrong that way. Right. (laughs) What's up in tech? Well, I promised a couple videos from NAB. I, I... didn't get a ton of them this year, but I was a little more discerning, and I wanted to catch stuff that I hadn't seen at NAM. never will see at NAM, because NAM is all about gear that's sold to musicians and music people. Right. NAB is gear sold to broadcasters. So I spent a little time in the broadcast area, the radio broadcast area. Yes, there is still radio. And I checked out their, um, I checked out a couple consoles. So we got a couple videos. Roll that beautiful bean footage, Susan. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech here at NAB 2018 in Las Vegas. The first booth we saw as we walked in, because they're in a key location, is Wheatstone. And here to tell me about a console that might be helpful for voice actors who want a console they don't have to replace every couple of years is Brad. How you doing, Brad? Very well. How are you doing? Very good. Okay. So. This is a cute little board. I mean, in the world of radio, it's mm-hmm. pretty small. Well, this is uh, the, the Air One 
was designed for uh, for voiceover rooms, for small internet radio stations, LP, small LPFM stations where they don't need a lot of channels, but they need something. The channels they do have, they want to be professional, and they want it to be stable. They want something that's going to be reliable and work for them for a long time. What, what in essence separates this board, being as small as it is, from the typical suspects that maybe we'd see in podcasting or in music, you know, like the okay. Mackies and things like that? Well, this was designed specifically as a broadcast style mixer. It's not a general production mixer. Uh, the little Mackies where there's, there's little EQ and Oxens and this, that, and the other. You don't need that for this type of work, and actually those types of controls tend to confuse and get in the way of things. Exactly. Here, this is a straight ahead, what we call an on-air console. You've got a couple of mic channels, and then you've got uh, six line channels uh, that take balanced audio in. And uh, we also have a USB audio port on here that when you plug that in, that feeds this eighth channel here. So you can take playback from a PC or uh, you know uh, anything that's got a USB audio port on it and then pipe that directly into the system. Does that also send audio back out? Yes, it does. Oh, nice. We can take, um, there's a little dip switch underneath there. The, the, this console has two program buses, program one, program two. And the little dip switch will say, Program one's going to be the return audio on the USB, or program two is going to be the return audio on the USB. So it makes for recording back to a computer very simple and easy. So that lets you create the mix minuses that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you have uh, you know, your, your monitor level control for your control room monitors. We put on a linear fader and also for uh, headphone output. So we have a headphone output on here, and uh, you can go um, and, and control that directly. So. so something else that I know from on-air boards that other people don't think of, when you press on on mic one, does that cut the monitor speakers? Yes, it does. And there's, again, there's a little dip switches underneath there that you set to determine if that happens or not. Because, you know, mic two may be in a separate room and it, you won't need to mute the control room. So you, you have choices on, on how that stuff interacts. Uh, typical uh, uh, list price on this is about uh, $2,200. Okay. And um, you know, may seem high compared to you know what people are, are used to with the with the other you know other type of mixers, but this is you know this is a solid piece of hardware that we build ourselves. It's not something that's manufactured somewhere in China or something like that. We build this all in the U.S. How about repairs and maintenance? What uh, if something goes wrong? Do you have warranty that kind of thing? Well, the com it comes with a full one-year uh, parts and labor warranty, and uh, it is serviceable. So unlike a lot of mixers, you know, so like if you have a fader problem, you know, fader wears out over time, you can replace that fader, no problem. So, and it's non-disposable mixing equipment. Yes. We're not used to that. This is something that can actually be serviced. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. Thanks right. so much for giving us that info. Great, thank you. Take care. All right. This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. Minus, are we at minus 4 dB? We're at minus 4 dB on VOBS. Okay, what question do we get the most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And guess what? We have a great answer to that question. Take vo to go -Go's free getting started in VO class. You heard right. It's free and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class. Taught by VO2GoGo's David H. Lawrence the 17th, winner of the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row for Best VoiceOver Class. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Go there. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. 
and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, Ilko Drozdowski is going to be with us in just a couple of minutes. Yeah. we got to talk a little bit more tech because that's what we're about. That's why you guys come. Physically. He is physically in here. In the room. He has gentlemen. made his way all the way from Santa Monica. I used to have to do that every week. Every week. I, I remember. I thought moving to Topanga would, have, match, would be worse. It's far better. Oh, actually. yeah. You're, 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 coming, you're going against the traffic. It's <laughs> yeah, easy. It's Everybody's heading better. out of the city. You're heading back uh-huh. here into the valley. It's great. Yeah. All righty. Well, first off, something about O Drive. What is this about? O Drive. Okay. So, I know many of you have this problem, and I don't know what you're doing to solve it right now. I'm curious. Type comments in the in the YouTube or whatever below, because I'd like to know how you deal with this problem. You've got a one terabyte Dropbox with I don't know 800 gigabytes of stuff in it. Where do they fit a terabyte? Just for you in a Dropbox. <laughs> they I'd... do it. It's incredible. So I have a terabyte Dropbox. And the reason why I have it is because I run everything in Dropbox. Just my whole business, all my client documents. I just want everything to be available where I want it, when I need it, period. I just don't like having to move stuff around manually. So Dropbox is what I use. The thing is, my laptop has a 256 gigabyte drive. That can be filled it, up very you quickly, can't, can't it? Pack yeah. 800 gigabytes. Right. You, you, no, not, not happening. happening. So what O Drive does is it allows you to sync only what you need to have. Now, some people with Dropbox, who are the geeks in the audience, are going, "Well, but I can go into Dropbox settings and do selective sync." Yes, you can, but it's a pain in the neck because that you have to go in there and mess with it all the time to unsync stuff that you don't need anymore. With O Drive, you can just right click on a folder maybe it's a project you finished it's in the can the client's happy and you just right click and check and click unsync the files immediately are removed from the hard drive but they're not deleted it leaves behind a placeholder for every single folder and every file Smart. so if you have a folder the files inside that folder you don't see those those are hidden they, they disappear but there's a placeholder for the folder and if you want to see what's in there you can double click on it and it will start to sync it over. But you can even sync only the folders and the placeholders. Right. <laughs> Let's say the folder is like 27 gigabytes of stuff in it, but you don't want to see all 27 gig. You can say, just show me the folder and its contents, and then I'll choose what I individually need to sync over. It's really cool. I've been using it since it was pretty new and pretty buggy, mm-hmm. and it's become quite stable and reliable. So mm. it works with Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, and a lot of other stuff. I think OneDrive, which mm-hmm. is the Microsoft thing. Yeah, uh, It works with a lot of different cloud drive tools. So any one of them can be synced in the O Drive system. Okay. So it's a little bit of a thing to set it up. Your files will actually be moving, like the Dropbox folder where it is now. Mm-hmm. It's not where your files will be after you install this. Right. It actually, things have to be sort of migrated into the O Drive thing. But they are still on Dropbox. It's kind of confusing when I, the more I talk, the more confusing it probably sounds. You, you lost me at sync. <laughs> um. But the thing is, the unsync thing is really awesome, and I never run out of hard drive space anymore. That's, it's, that's good to it's know. It's been really, really handy. You so need to you explain have that, that problem, to my wife. <laughs> o Drive is what you might want to check out. It's just the utility I've been using for a while. Excellent. All righty. Well, uh, someone was asking, can it be uh, can Dropbox be automatically um, synced? It, it is. Yes, Dropbox is automatically synced. Google Drive, whatever accounts you have, it'll work with all of them. If you get the more deluxe accounts, it's not free. I think right. there's a really stripped down free version, but the more deluxe version, you can set it to auto unsync. So when things are over a month old, it just auto unsyncs them and removes them from the computer. So Alrighty. it's cool stuff. All right. We have a tech question from Yay. somebody in our voluminous audience. 
Um, my mic level is low only on Skype. Is there a way to boost my sound on Skype? Here's what her chain is. A 416, a oh, universal, <laughs> universal audio, audio follow- arrow, arrow, an yeah. iMac, and she uses Adobe Audition. Okay. So hmm. usually well, Skype has this thing about it sometimes controls its own levels. It does. As a matter of fact, by default, I believe that is the setting in Skype, which is automatically control levels. Right. You probably want to turn that off. But before you even do that, you probably want to go back and install the last version of Skype. Why? If you're using the current version of Skype, which I think is 8-something. I, I just I just tried it, and it's like... You're hating eh. it, right? Who is using the new version of Skype and actually likes it? I want to know. Comments below. <laughs> if you like the new version of Skype. I don't think anybody in there, unless they're trolling, is going to say yes. The new version of Skype is awful. <laughs> um, go back to the prior version. You can Google around and look for legacy or old versions of Skype, and there's an archive of every version they've ever made. God. Um, I, things have become much happier since I've done that. Okay. Much, much happier. Good, good to know. But I don't use Skype anyway, so it's like... I still use... Even though I hate it, I still use it. Yeah, it's I, like Facebook, you know? <laughs> I, I either use Zoom or I just yell really loud. <laughs> Maybe someone will hear there, me. There are sliders for microphone level and speaker level in the uh, yeah. Skype sound preferences. So just make sure the microphone level slider is turned up more than what it is now, like maybe all the way or three quarters of the way, something like that. Because when, when you're doing, when you're like doing screen sharing or like when you and I are consulting with people and they're like, oh, and you're like helping them set their levels, yeah. Skype is like playing oh with it, which is like, all right, when we're done, go back and try this with Skype off. bad news. And depending on your setup, yeah. that Skype playing with the level yeah. can actually screw up the recording levels. Ew. So your recording levels are going up and down. Don't, don't use Skype for, for, uh, for directed sessions. Not a good idea. Yeah, unless you have it properly tweaked. And even then, I, I don't know if I trust it as much. I don't trust it the way I used to trust it. Let's put it that way. Right. Use Source Connect. It works a lot better. Source Connect, of course, or, or Zoom even. Or, or Zoom. And yeah. I've used Zoom. It. it works fabulous. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. A uh, question came in this week that was utterly unrelated to voiceovers. Um, <laughs> but he was, he was talking about moving. And he was like, oh, how do I plug all my stuff in in the right order? And because he has a production studio, right. it kind of makes you wonder, well, wow. why are you using all of this outboard gear? He had to a do heck that? of a list of gear. Yeah. It, it sounded like a silly. sort of a traditional studio with lots of boxes right. and rack stuff. And right. And, but I've, I've gotten a lot of email uh, lately, people asking questions about, as a matter of fact, we were sitting here, phone rang, somebody was moving to a smaller apartment. Mm-hmm. How do you, if you've got to move your studio, what are some of the things we need to consider when you're moving your home voiceover studio? Well, well here's a tip. Go for it. I'll start with this one, okay. and then you can keep going. All right. Just because I, I forget things very quickly. So when a thought comes... Wait till you get to my age. I need to, <laughs> need to jump on it right now. Um, there are these wire, wire label sheets right. you can buy. If you search Amazon for wire labels, mm-hmm. and they just have li- alphabets and numbers, A, B, C, D, E, H, G. What I found works really, really well. You take a Sharpie. <laughs> it's much faster and easier than using a Sharpie. Oh, even and better. it looks nicer. They have these little white labels with letters on them. Put every single cable where it plugs in, put that letter on the plug or near the plug and on the jack. So yes. the, the jack on the unit it's plugged into, put a letter A, a. put an A on the, on the side of the cord or on the plug and so forth. Go through how A, B, C, however many cables you have and label everything that way. Right. So when you move to the new place, you just a into a match the letters b into b i mean i it's it sounds simple but it took me a while to think of that i used to write the names of what each plug was right mackey oxen one and then you'd go but which where does it go now i, I don't remember what oxen one's for who cares it doesn't matter just match cable for jack letter for letter and that's the way you match everything up yeah that's what works for me yeah. do you have any other do well you have that's any, uh, that's tricks? that's what i usually do too is i'll take you know, masking tape or yeah. duct tape or something and, and mark all you gotta have some sort of key or code. Right, right. Yeah. Um, of course my big thing is acoustics and your big thing is acoustics. And when you move, there's another issue that comes up. Now, say you've set some stacks for somebody in Twisted Wave or an Adobe Audition or something like that. When you move, you're moving to a totally different acoustical situation. 
Yeah, I mean, unless yeah. you're moving like a whole whisper room or studio right. bricks with you, something's going to change. The room's going to change. It's going to be quite different. Right. So it's important to double check with those who set your any of your parameters, like yeah. Mr. Whittem here uh, or myself, and say, hey, I'm moving. Let's listen to the sound and let's make any adjustments that need to be made. Um, and that's, that's important to think about. Definitely. Uh, but acoustics are one of those things that are really important to your home voiceover studio. So when you move, you've got to be able to move into a situation where you've got a, a walk-in closet or something, or we have to totally rethink how you're going to do it. Right. And so, uh, best to consult with someone who knows exactly what they're doing, which by the way, is what George and I do. And if you happen to need help and you want to work with George, who's fabulous with acoustics and all this patch-based stuff and all these things, <laughs> how do they get a hold of you? More information than you, than you require, then you need to come to me. <laughs> That's uh, georgethetech.com or georgethetech.com or georgethetech, the domain that nobody likes, but I just can't let it go. All right. Um, that's where you find everything about me. And to find Dan and his brand of tech support help, you go to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Don't ask me how I got that website. Just forward thinking. Oh, well, you know what? When you're on the bleeding edge of, of, of a business model, yeah, you get the good domain. You get to do those sorts of things. Uh, homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, you can go to my website. It talks about all the stuff that I do and the services I offer. And uh, also have the legendary specimen collection cup if you click on that you can drop a specimen to your audio let's see how you're doing and most of the time it's fine just a little tweak here a little tweak there mm -hmm. anyway so that's the tech segment for tonight our guest tonight is ilko drozdowski we're going to talk about agents and his career and all that important stuff about agents that we're like what do they do this is your chance, folks. You don't get this opportunity that often. Absolutely. You better be in the chat room and ask questions. All right. Coming up right after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody. I'm here to tell you about our buddies over at Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and many other really cool things. And I heard, uh-oh. Do we have an uh-oh? Yeah. Okay. We got a weird warning. We'll wait for the weird warning. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll just keep on going. Source Connect is a software you really want to have if you're connecting to studios. If you're a voice actor who's climbing the ranks, you're probably seeing... Uh, you know, requests to have Source Connect sessions. Well, this is the tool you got to have, kids. They have Source Connect now, the free version, which you should already have. It's free, so why don't you have it already? It, just go over to source-elements.com and go get it. But the regular standard version, that's the, that's the industry standard. It's becoming rapidly the industry standard for doing pro sessions, and that's what you should probably get a free trial of over at source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial. You don't have to have a USB iLock dongly thing. It just licenses, licenses is to your computer, and you're ready to go right away. Give it a shot. And if you have any problems with it, I do tech support with them and help them with it. So I might be the one that you talk to. Anyway, we'll be right back with Dan and Ilko right after this. Minus four, are we at minus four dB? We're at minus four dB on VOBS. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. VOBS is still on? Seriously? Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days.
Wow, this is VOBS? All right, it's time to introduce our guest. Ilko Drozdowski is responsible for booking, recruiting, and hand-holding, hand-holding, and many of many, many voice talent. He plays talent in every field of voiceover, uh, including network promotion, film, trailer, animated series, video games, commercial campaigns, audiobook, and voices for toys, and both in English and in Spanish markets. His success in Hollywood as a voice agent makes him a very popular speaker, which is why we're having him tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop. Let's welcome to our show, Elko Drozdowski. How you doing? What's happening? Good. I'm doing fine. I am pronouncing your name correctly, am I not? You are. All right. So good at those ethnic voices. <laughs> that's that's not a that's not a Jane John Doe or James Smith name. That's a and and people probably ask you about that all the time. We're like, where are you from? Are you are you an immigrant or that sort of thing? And I did immigrate from New York City. Okay, well that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Uh, first off, happy birthday! You made it a point that it was your birthday for the last four or five days, from what I saw on Facebook, and you have many many fans who are happy to so. And and you are now. 25, 26, uh, 27, 27. All right. And you also announced that you're retiring. Tell us a little that, bit about why you're retiring. And uh, I have come into a perfect situation in my life mm -hmm. uh, where I can do what I actually came to Hollywood to do, which is to write. And I somehow stumbled into the agenting business and uh, for some weird reason, people are telling me I was good at it. <laughs> so I stuck with it for 19 years. Yeah. So you came out, you, you drove out here from New York. Yeah, and you, drew, you literally drove. I literally drove in a car yeah. that could have broken down anywhere between here and well, between New York and here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to us in Wyoming. Ooh. In the middle of nowhere. Happened to me in New Mexico. Oh. Better than North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. And better than Wyoming, too. Uh, but anyway, so you came out here to be a writer. How did you drift into becoming an agent? And, and a legendary one at that. Uh, well, you're too kind in that compliment. Okay. All right. But I will certainly accept it. Okay, go for it. Um, you know, I woke up one morning and I said, if I don't take a booking for a voiceover talent, my life will be completely hollow and incomplete that's that's a very interesting philosophy to yes. have um no that's not, uh, the happen. truth okay. is i needed a real full-time job and um i interviewed with steve tisherman on i believe a thursday he called me the next day and said when do you want to start and i said how about monday so in four days i went from interview to having my first full-time job in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. Hmm. And what did he have you doing? Uh, the first year I was an assistant. So I would schedule actors and then I would schedule actors mm -hmm. and then I would schedule actors. <laughs> and by that, I mean <laughs> coming like into pattern. our office to record auditions. Right. Uh, because this was before we would record actors onto computers it was recorded onto a digital audio tape mm -hmm. adapt and then for an hour and a half or so at the end of the day transferred onto a cassette remember those you could read about them in history books if people still read books or if you're a hipster yeah. there's, a, probably this, exactly there's one on my desk there actually jack <laughs> next to the keyboard but uh, awesome we can, you know we can show people that one but you know just as a, 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 an archival piece <laughs> and uh, then put it in a FedEx machine or have... Um, it is. <laughs> it, it was one of these guys. Oh, and you can record on it. Yes. These little tabs right here, when you pop it off, you can no longer Go record on, on this. Unless you put a piece of tape back on it. Unless you put a piece of tape on it. It was usually editing tape, as I recall. But anyway, so, all right, so you're, so you're, 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 you're calling people, and how is it that... that that those particular people would get called in for one specific thing or another. And was that part of your decision or was that like, go get to call these people, these people, and these people. Uh, it wasn't. My job yeah. was to actually call okay. and schedule actors oh, in house okay. and out of house to out of house casting offices. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the decisions to cast the actors was actually up to the agents. So the agents would list all the actors that they wanted. I would uh, actually pick up 
phone calls, pick up the telephone and call them in mm-hmm. to schedule, mm-hmm. or send out a page on a beeper. Hey, Jack, do you have a telephone? Because we need to show what, what one of those looks like, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then a beeper. That's even better. I like that. And that was better. <laughs> and um, and uh, uh, not that much later, a little company named Voice Bank came out. Mm-hmm. And they um, could accept voiceover auditions in a digital format uh, uploaded to their site. So the moment it was uploaded to their server the producer could listen to it immediately and that was also right at the beginning of the mp3 age and the sending emails with attachments age and um in those days we would get a week or five days to cast a project and that whittled down to two days a day by the afternoon by later this morning yeah. So it was a little bit more labor intensive back then. It was. Yeah. Okay. So you were like, you're making lots of calls and, and that sort of thing as opposed to email, email, that sort of thing. And it, and it done. We actually didn't even have computers on our desktops. Really? We would actually write bookings in a book. <laughs> what a concept. And during lunch, yeah. uh, once I was uh, promoted to agent, uh, I would cover the lunch of all the other agents. Mm-hmm. All the books would be stacked in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, one book per our four big uh, promo trailer uh, actors. Mm-hmm. And then the fifth book we call the people's book. It was everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and it was one? like a bookie's ledger uh, Name of actor, time, studio, ad agency, producer, XYZ, whatever information you can fit on one long line, (laughs) you could. So lots of whiteout, lots of pencil. What year did you become the D in TGMD? I, we had been talking with Steve to purchase this company for about a year and we made the deal complete. I'm going to say 2007. Oh, okay. Far out. So in mm-hmm. eight years, I went from knowing nothing about voiceover to being a partner at a major talent agency. Amazing. Very interesting. That's cool. Yeah. So, all right. So you graduated to being an agent. What does an agent do? Now, all you guys out there, you know, you're always looking to get a voiceover agent, but I don't think a lot of people truly understand the system. And the system has changed a whole lot in the last 15 years or so. What to, Give us an idea of what an average day for an agent is and how many people he's surrounded by and, and, and what, what the, the entire mechanism is like. Uh, an agent is essentially a salesman. And what I have to do is sell talent, sell voices. Um, that's the most labor-intensive part, actually going out and finding work for the actors. Mm-hmm. The easy part is... Once you have the booking, schedule them at the recording studio right. or or line up the time if the actor has a home ISDN studio. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting a major ad agency or a major studio or network interested in your actor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and how do you do that? I mean, how do you, I mean, you've got a bunch of talent there. Are you pushing one person or you're like giving them a choice of people or it depends we do get breakdowns we do get casting sheets with specifications of actors age ranges what they're looking for what they're not looking for so that is something i would have to do or i would have my assistant make the phone calls but i would cast the actors have them come in and have them if not come in then uh, deliver the voiceover audition to me well before the deadline so I could review it, listen to it, make sure they uh, pronounce the uh, product correctly <laughs> um, and didn't leave a dog barking in the background or anything right. like that. Um, that's relatively the easy part. The harder part is making the cold calls, finding new production companies that would require voice over talent. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, that's definitely the more labor intensive and people skill intensive uh, right. aspects of agent thing. Right. So you you're making these calls, you've got assistants making these calls, you have assistants saying Mr. Dudoski is on the line for you, would you 
<laughs> that sort of thing, which is kind of nice. It's very Hollywood. Um, so you're, you're, you're trying to sell different talent to particular clients. The fact is, from what I understand, they're usually not the guys that make the decision on it. It's usually the client's client that's making that decision. And sometimes I'm, I'm sure that can be kind of a frustrating part of it too. Uh, I'm not entirely sure of how that process works. Um, I like his voice, <laughs> but, uh, on numerous occasions, I've heard of the owner of the company wanting his son or daughter to be in the commercial and they're not a pro actor. Right. So that does happen. I've had ad agency creatives or producers tell me your actors are our number one choice. And then when they played for the vendor, the vendor being Mr. and Mrs. Coca-Cola or Mr. and Mrs. Ford, they say, now we want this one, which is, could be the third option they deliver. That's the one that they right. like. And uh, by that, I mean the marketing, marketing executives at the actual company that wants to advertise. They also fancy themselves producers and, Hollywood people. So on occasion, they will overrule the creatives who they actually have hired to do the creative, produce the commercial or produce the trailer, produce the promo. And, uh, and they will use said actor that they want. They're scratching the check so they can hire whomever they want. Right. Now you also work with casting directors and how does that, how does that all work? Uh, the casting director, they send me an email or a phone call, phone call me. And say, who do you have that would do this great? Give me your top three choices or top one. And if I have none, I'll pass. It's a waste of time to push something through a door that's just not going to work. All right. Um, on occasion, I'll say, this is the only actor I'm sending you. That's how confident I feel. <laughs> this is the one who's going to get it. And then they scream, no, I need more options. I said, what, do you want the winner or do you want somebody who's an also ran? So that has happened on occasion. And, um, and a number of times I'll hear my actors auditions and I'll love actor or actress a, and they go with the third one down the list that I, my opinion, maybe didn't do such a great job, but I'm the agent, not the one hiring. Right. So let them hire whomever they want. <laughs> and, and for the most amount of money that you can. Correct. And, and that's always, that's always an issue with people too, is, you know, when you're, when you've got an agent, they're going to negotiate a better deal for you than you can yourself. Unless of course you're really good and aggressive and understand that whole, that whole thing. Correct. How do how do you, how do you get them to, to, to price, you know, a particular talent and, it's is is are they willing to pay more for somebody else or uh, the overwhelming bulk of the actors get hired at union scale. Uh, radio rates are different in Los Angeles than in the rest of the country, <coughs> so they'll hire for what is considered LA scale, mm -hmm. which is also a varying number. It's approximately the same price as what a TV commercial would be. So right now, a TV commercial pays $505 and four cents. So glad they negotiated those extra four cents. <laughs> yeah. Because that makes my input just excellent on the software. Hey, it adds up after a while. That's I'm, for the staples that's used to staple the coffee together. I don't know. And uh, so LA radio rate is approximately 500 If they offer 475 that's still okay. Uh, regular scale for radio, I believe, is about three hundred dollars. So anything over that is over scale, and it's golden, and it's great. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, boy, you've missed a lot already. Our guest is Ilko Drozdowski. We're talking about agents and agencies, and we're talking about Ilko. And uh, if you've got a question for him, throw it in our chat room. And Jack Daniel, who is our social media maven and czar, will get that question to us. And we will address it to him in a little while. So if you got questions about agents, because I know you all do, get it in there right now. Tell us a little bit about the agency system. Now, this, is, this has been going on in Hollywood and New York for many, many years. What, why, why have an entire agency as opposed to one guy, you know, with a couple of people doing what 
what you do. How is it that a, a large agency can can help the process? And why is it that actors want to be with that agency or that particular agency? Yeah, well, let me take a roundabout okay. answer. Okay. Um, if you want to be business executive, you go to business school. If you want to be a surgeon, you go to medical school. If you want to be a lawyer, you go to law school. Uh, there is no school for agenting. There is no real university. It's do or do not. And um, <laughs> okay. so you understand, <laughs> no you have to understand the general outlook of what <clears throat> an agent does. And every day you learn something new. Um, that said... What does the agent look for in talent? What do we uh, expect out of talent? Uh, you have to treat this as a business. I treat it as a business. You have to treat it as a business. That means on time, which I was not today, but that's okay. <laughs> no, you were fine. Don't worry. You're, you're... Um, <laughs> still, I pride myself on being on time. And if you're on time, you're late. So you should be early. Um. That's the number one thing I implore upon actors. Always be early. We'll give you an extra chance to look over the script, to chitty chat with the producers, because you're there as the face, not only of your agency, but of yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you say something off color or curse a lot or just do something to make yourself not the best actor to work with, they won't take it out on you. They will be calling the agent and letting me know that the actor either misbehaved or uh, or did something unprofessional, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, so what we straddle that line between creativity and business. So I have to deal with contracts, make sure they're paid right, make sure the rate was right. Make sure the time in and out for the actor is right. So I have to handle all of that stuff for the artist. The artist goes in, does the art, and then you're done. Um, but at the same time, the actor has to comport themselves professionally and make the agency look good because the advertising agency that hires the actor will keep coming to me if I keep delivering them great talent that's fun to work with, easy to work with, um, and talented, first of all. Where the creative part of my aspect works is if I see a breakdown. Explain what a breakdown is. Oh, it's a breakdown the specs, is. The specs for the, that particular. Is production. essentially the, 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 the breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> you can't it's, use the word in the definition. <laughs> it's what the producer is looking for. The age range of the actor, if it's a male or female. If they want an accent, if they don't want an accent, if uh, it, it's whatever they're looking for stylistically from the voiceover artist. Um, so I look at that and I deliver the what I call the usual suspects, the ones who are going to give solid deliveries. And sometimes I'll throw in something oddball because it feels good and interesting. British, you never know. One, I don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps I'll record somebody who sounds a little bit older, but in my opinion, feels right for the spot. Or I will have a lady read on it instead of all men. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I have a very, very good rapport with the producer, I'll say, guess what? I recorded this one gal and she's amazing. I think she'd be great. Maybe not for this, but for something else. I don't know. It depends on how long I've worked with a producer. And, uh, and I said, do you want to hear? And they'll say yes. And then I send it off. And hopefully they'll say, wow, man, that Ilko is smart <laughs> and really clever and stunningly handsome and, um, and modest. So let's, uh, let's hire this woman. We never thought of doing this. And it worked. That's called hitting the home run in game seven of the Super Bowl. So, exactly. <laughs> um, the point is, is on occasion it works incredibly well. And I feel awesome for that. But typically if they're asking for a male 35, I just give them a bunch of male 35s. Right. So, But it's important to do a change up, to use a 
the sports metaphor in that. Uh, Precisely. But And that's what you're doing there is you're throwing them something they weren't expecting that can make them think creatively and go, yeah, that's a really good idea. So, or ah, not for this spot, but we just picked up a new campaign. Right. And this is a good option. So they would then uh, send me, hopefully, new copy, a new breakdown for this new campaign hmm. they have. All right. Again, we're talking with Ilko Drozdowski. If we're talking about agencies, again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. We'll be glad to ask Ilko any and all questions. No holds barred. Um, I think a question that a lot of people, a lot of people in our audience, who are all voice actors, by the way, an entire audience of voice actors, what is it that an agency is looking for in a talent? I mean, I have lots of friends who are saying, I just got signed by this agency. I just got signed by that agency. And they're, they're all real excited about it. What is it that, you know, you as an agent were looking for for talent? And then how do you translate, you know, someone who wants to be a voice talent or has got their demo and done all their training and stuff, how do they end up translating that into getting an agent? What's 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 the process for you, and what are you the looking for? The number one thing is talent, um, because that is what's going to sell. The cream will rise to the top, always. Um, the tricky part is that often, often, sometimes, sometimes, often, mm -hmm. uh, we will get a demo that is incredible, almost too incredible. Almost too good to be true. <laughs> Super slick, works great, every spot's varied, the mixing is great, the pacing is great, the tone is great, everything is awesome. Um, then what I would do is I would contact the actor, get a little breakdown on them, and I would send them some sample scripts from previous castings we had. Mm -hmm. Let's say, come on into our recording studio, we'll do a test run. Uh, our booth director will direct them, and uh, sometimes these people can't read three words <laughs> strung together. Right. And But their demo sounds incredible. Um, as I said, that happens sometimes, not all the time, but I've been burnt on occasion. Um, other times I hear a demo that's just not good, but I can hear something in the voice. The delivery, the tone... The smokiness, there's something like, it's a je ne sais quoi. Right. Um, and I've heard thousands of demos in my career. And some demos, I'm dialing the actor before it's even done. And I say, <laughs> I want to be your agent. And others, I have to parcel it out and break it up and listen to it again and again and again and again and... If I have to do it that often, it's probably not going to work. Right. right. Uh, on occasion, we've loved the demo. We've loved the booth read. We have the actor come in, and the chemistry is just not there. It's not working. They're too much. They're too pushy. They're too stiff. They're too quiet. They're too, I don't know, or too little, likewise. If the chemistry's not there, and I don't have that personal excitement to represent and basically stick my neck out because everyone who's hiring the actor comes to me, not to the actor. Right. So I'm the conduit. I'm the gatekeeper. I'm the keeper of the flame. I'm the one who has to um, deliver good stuff to the producer or else they're just going to go somewhere else. Yeah. If I either deliver schlock or deliver an actor that just completely misbehaved, at the studio or whatever, that could be enough for the producer to just be like, you know, I'm just going to go with somebody else. Right, mm. right. You know. Interesting. You were talking about demos there, that, you know, that somebody, it's a huge business now. Uh, I mean, not just here in L.A., but everywhere. Everybody seems to be producing demos, which, of course, means not everybody should be producing demos, and people should probably not be producing their own, unless, of course, they have the skill to do so. Um but what do you look for in a demo? What is it that, that grabs you that says, I'm going to call this guy before I'm finished uh, listening to the demo? That's a great question. I don't know. Oh. Uh, everyone okay. is different. 
Yeah. It's like every cheeseburger you eat is different. Like, <laughs> look great. And you're like, oh, this sucks. Or like, this looks really lame. But you eat it and you're like, wow, wow where have yeah. you been my whole life? <laughs> it, there's no rhyme or reason to demos. Um, I was listening to one the other day and I was like, wait, 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 hold on. You have a Ford spot in the beginning and a Subaru spot in the second and a Toyota spot in the third. And I was like, no, 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 you, you can't have competing cars on the same demo. Except during the news. <laughs> and uh, it, that was one thing that I said, I no, it's not going to work for me because I like hearing big ticket items, car, pharma, drink, beer, um, and then the oddball one, like Vegas tourism or Wyoming tourism, whatever. Right. I, I like the mix-up things. I like hearing partner reads, uh, father, daughter. Uh, when you have like two brothers reading on a spot or two guys, mm -hmm. it's confusing because you're not Who's, sure which one's, one's which. which. Right. That's why it's better to have yeah. father, daughter, mom, son. Right. That really will clearly differentiate um, hmm. who I'm going to be listening to. Right. Um, a good demo is a minute, minute five. Uh, most producers won't listen past the first 10, 12 seconds, honestly. Talking about commercials at this point. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you, you gotta, you gotta nail them from, from the time that mic is keyed. You, and you, you gotta, gotta, you gotta come out swinging and knock them out in the first, first round. Really. Yeah. And with movie trailer demos, all the films have to be within the last three, four months. Uh -huh. Cause if you have a demo with. Lord of the Rings. Really? <laughs> wow. That movie was practically sold as in black and white. You know? No, it needs to to sound competitive. It has to be relatively very, very new stuff. Mm. Right. So someone's a new talent and they've got their demo. What is, well, in your opinion, what's the best way to approach an agency uh, to try and seek representation? Or is it more important, I guess maybe just my thoughts on this, is that if you're good enough, if you're making money, they're going to come find you sometimes. But, or is it more important you know, when you're starting off, how you know to approach an agency and what's the best way to do it? Um. Well, when I was an agent, my favorite new talent would be the ones who would say, "I just hooked up the Tide account and I need an agent to handle it." Right. So I'm gonna walk over a big bag of money with dollar signs to you. <laughs> that is the best kind of submission. Yeah. Um, anything short of that, forget it. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, again, I. How does a talent reach out? Um, a good number of the talent I've recruited over the years were producers who say. This friend of mine or this kid from my college wants to be an, uh, a voice actor. Here's a demo. Do you mind listening? Automatically, that raises the stakes because I have to sort of be cool and groovy to my producer. Right. But there's no – I'm not bound to represent them just because a producer is telling me that. Um, I'll listen. I'll get – I've always been honest. If the demo is soft – if it's something I already have, it's something that I can't sell, I'm straight about it. Great demo. I already got a, several people like you. Good luck. Um, and that's that's you. That's one way to approach. Uh, our My old agency, AVO Talent, their submission policy was uh, submit via Facebook. A link to your website, a, a demo attached, a, multiple ways we review if we're interested we'll probably call you in for a booth read and if those two work we'll call in for a meeting to see if the chemistry is there and then we get in bed which sounds like a lot of fun uh again we're talking <laughs> with the uh, <laughs> Dusky. we're talking about agencies and again if you got a question throw it in oh, the chat room and the questions are, are starting to pile in rolling here. in i was wondering where the questions are oh what's going on no, we'll, we'll get to them we, we have to do a break and then we'll let you just roll through them <laughs> for the next two hours you're uh, gonna have to do them quickly <laughs> <laughs> okay well in that case why don't we take a break right now and uh we'll get answers to your questions here on voice over body shop and uh we'll get to those right after this
Hey, for the first time ever, save $50 on VoiceOver Essentials Dream Bundle, the VO1A microphone, specifically designed for VoiceOver, a MicPort Pro USB Analog Digital Preamp, the Audio Pro's first choice, and the gorgeous all-metal VO1A pop filter, custom crafted for your VO1A microphone. All this with free two business day shipping in the continental United States. The VO1A voiceover microphone. Virtually all microphones are designed for musicians and singers, not us uh, word workers. So with the help of MXL, Harlan Hogan designed a microphone specifically for voiceover. The VO1A gets rave reviews for its sound and affordable price. And all items shown here are included. There's the foam line travel case, shock mount, MXL quick mic clip, fleece lined protective storage pouch, and a 15 foot Marshall XLR microphone cable. The VO1A PF silver pop filter matches your Harlan Hogan signature microphone perfectly. It clamps directly onto your mic, and the sleek wraparound retro design recalls the glory days of the Beatles and Abbey Road Studios, while it reduces plosives and protects the microphone's gold sputtered diaphragm. The MicPort Pro USB interface for clear, clean, pristine sound in an amazingly small package. It's impossible to beat the MicPort Pro. The preamp and the analog digital audio interface turns any microphone into a USB mic, but with studio quality audio, not the consumer sound so often heard on all-in-one USB microphones. Get free two-day shipping in the US. Get all three and save $50. Bought separately, $548.94. Bundle price, $498.94. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com right now and save a bundle on this bundle. Just click on the VoiceOver Essentials link at the bottom of the VOBS page. Thanks, Harlan. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze. From $16,995. Be inspired, then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the demo production tab to find out more. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop. We're talking with Ilko Drozdowski. You just retired, though, so you're not actually doing this anymore, but you know this business inside out, backwards, and upside down. And I didn't boom. forget it since Friday, <laughs> much as I try. We need to put Rhett in parentheses after yes, your yes. name on the title. Emeritus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... You know, you don't have to do this. This is how you're spending your first day in retirement is in your car coming over here to what talk a guy. to us. We, so we cool. totally appreciate that. Well, I had a question about the demos. You, you you hinted earlier, if a demo is a little too slick, a little too perfect, that's a little bit of a red flag sometimes? Or yeah. Or it, does it yeah. translate if to... It's a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of music in this. Uh, it just... It makes it really super shiny and yeah. it a bit of a red flag because I don't know if the talent is gonna back up this this level of uh, mm -hmm. of production, to mm -hmm. be totally honest. Mm -hmm. Makes uh, sense. Sometimes I'll hear a demo with a lot of sound bed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, where's the actor coming in? <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, right yeah. at the end. No, right. no, 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 no. Yeah, you yeah, gotta. Yeah, yeah. I'll, we just gotta showcase you, not the music and the sound beds. And right, the, right. And that that stuff. It's right. gotta showcase the artist. Yeah. Does it have to sound like the word that we had? We had this special we did a few years ago. We the called it the demo demo, demo demo derby, derby. <laughs> and we listened to demos and we critiqued them anonymously. And the thing that we said that made one sound better than many others was that it sounded familiar. Like uh, it just sounded like the spots were. 
real current and yeah. real is that something else that translates to you uh, uh, we get a number of demos that are real spots that were lifted from air oh yeah i'm not even um, talking about real material but i mean just it just sounds like it's legit it just sounds like it could be real material but yes. it probably isn't i i call that the easy read yeah um mm -hmm. it's easy to listen to it's easy to direct it's just easy yeah and uh it's it's the easy read mm -hmm. and when i first started we were still in the sort of the age of the over-the-top announcers the guys with the deep pipes and the conversational announcers it was sort of a new trend within just a couple of years mm -hmm. of when i started and uh celebrities have been doing commercials and voiceover since the beginning of time so to sort of say oh the biz is turned upside down because the celebs not no mm -hmm. not not to not any more or less than it has been um at least in my in my opinion yeah um but nevertheless uh I do hear celebrities doing scale jobs and quite often they'll say, we want a celeb, but we'll only pay scale, but it's going to make crazy money because it's home Depot or it's a retail account. Right. And by retail account is one that works every week. Right. Mm -hmm. So even at scale, it just adds up with residuals and the session and the, this, right. Mm -hmm. um, all car accounts are retail unless you have, you know, a shorter run of them with a big celeb under a big contract. Before we get to the questions, because I mean, there are a lot of them. I have to mention the one name that hasn't been said tonight, which is Don LaFontaine. He was a I worked in his, worked on his home studio. We became friends and he was with your agency. How much did you interact with Don yourself personally? Did you have to deal, deal with Don or did others really handle uh, his account mostly? Steve Tisherman basically handled him exclusively yeah. while he ran the place. Mm -hmm. um, other people would pitch in here and there if Steve was either on vacation or sure. out to lunch or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Don was a dream talent, yeah. not just of the skill and quality of his talent, yeah. but always on time, always a pro, never complained. Everyone gushed about how amazing he was to work with. He would rewrite copy if it wasn't working just to make it work for the producer. And it worked. Don started as a copywriter, <laughs> so he understood yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had that clout. Wow. And if it worked better, okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, he was a dream, dream talent. Uh, once we purchased the company, I had a far more uh, active role in working his daily uh book as it were yeah, and he and he worked busy multiple book. times a day yeah yes a busy book didn't and he? um there my first year as a partner over the christmas holiday it just happened that i was the only one in the office for a week or two and i handled all of those guys and i basically handled everyone in the agency for those two <laughs> weeks and his oh, was man. busy but the easiest yeah they knew what they wanted yeah yeah. And he knew how to deliver and be on time and be a pro about it, period. Totally. All right. Don. Larry Hudson gets the first question. Yes. Larry's right at the top. What are the top? Okay, we're going to swing out with some good ones, and juicy ones. What are the top four or five agents or agencies, I should say, not agents, agencies in Los Angeles, New York for commercial work, in your opinion? Uh, well, certainly AVO talent. <laughs> that was the one you just retired from. Uh, correct. Um DPN is solid, SBV is solid, Morris is solid, um, KSA is solid. Those are, those are essentially the top five. When you five. say Morris, you're talking about WME? Blame Morris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. That was uh, easy. All right. Dan. Uh, John C. relates to Paul's question here. Uh, does this number of agents change for union and non-union people? I'm not exactly sure how. How did he state that one? He didn't read Paul's question. Oh, I, I thought it, it relates a, to Paul's oh, question. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> took out the top of that. Uh, okay, uh, Paul Stefano asks, uh, who, by the way, is on double secret probation now. 
Uh, how many secret probation? <laughs> double secret Love probation. It. Awesome. Yes. yes, he he abused his privileges at the top of the show. Uh, how many agents is too many? Uh, yeah, there's the trick. Uh, you can legally only have one agent per county in the United States. <laughs> and there are thousands of counties in the United States. I didn't know that was a federal statute, but uh, I don't know maybe. about federal, but it's you essentially cannot sign either a general services agreement or a union agency contract with an agent. You can only have one per county, period. That's how it goes. I have talent who I rep here. They have representatives in San Diego. They have representatives in San Francisco, Denver, Miami, Dallas, New York, Montreal, Vancouver, mm-hmm. um, Milwaukee. Yeah. For production work that's done in those particular locales. Correct. Or, yeah. Uh, now, sometimes one of Atlanta is another hub. Um, uh, Miami. I, I, and overseas as well, mm-hmm. London and, and Madrid and Paris and so on. Um, the On occasion, some of these smaller agencies will get a big national account to cast. So what we tell the actor is if you live in L.A., we're the mothership. So if your Denver agent gets a big Ford account shot, you reach out to us because we probably got it too. Mm-hmm. So we would get dibs on that because we're the mothership. So please defer to us on things like that. Um, clearly, if it's like a, a local Denver pizza shop, we're probably not going to get that one. So <laughs> right. you could feel free and just go ahead and do that one. <laughs> okay. Um, so, this, so these numbers of agents are in returns. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but um, you're you're. Spear was all union talent. Is that correct? Right? So, um, does this number of agents thing relate to the non-union side of things, as far as you know? Or uh, I there... would imagine. Yeah. I would suspect. Yeah. I cannot confirm. Okay. Um, and if nominated, you won't serve. Correct. All right. <laughs> uh, Elena, let's see. Uh, Elena Montine asks: When choosing talent, do clients and studios prefer actors from higher-profile agencies over? Boutique agencies, which you were just talking about. It completely depends on the relationship. Uh, This is a business of relationships. Um, There are some vendors that will only go to XYZ agency or agent, and there are others who will absolutely never go to XYZ uh, talent or agency. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just personal preferences. They are not required to send a breakdown or anything to every single agency. Mm -hmm. Um, So I hope that answered the question. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Jack Daniel gets to actually ask his actual question next. With an actual microphone. Yeah. Ailco, that being you, (laughs) especially with reference to today's market, what do you wish talent would do more of vis-a-vis the agent-talent relationship or if you prefer less of? Um, I overheard this once. Your agent only collects 10% of the money. That means the actor has to sort of do 90% of the work. That means acting lessons. That means taking class. That means going to events and hobnobbing with creatives and casting people and so on. Uh, the actor really should not stay at home waiting for the phone or the email to ring. They need to actively be motivating their career and themselves. And that doesn't mean stalking creative directors. That's a little weird. (laughs) Um, But I do mean uh, going to classes, going to taking lessons, uh, singing lessons work too, acting lessons, not just voiceover lessons. Um, Anything you can do to further your career without me there really, really works. And then tell your agent, I'm doing this. I want to talk to you about expanding my parameters into animation or into video game or motion capture or promo or trailer. Right. And... um, and some actors are 
clearly only commercial. A very small handful can do everything. If an actor comes from a very long promo session, they're going to be up and hyped and won't be able to bring it down for a commercial, for a, a, a mm-hmm. for more mellow, yeah. uh, <laughs> conversational commercial bit. They're all amped and high. Yeah. And sometimes if you do a animation thing, you're all also amped and can't really do a commercial mm-hmm. read or a promo read. You'd have to shift gears and only... Again, only a small, small handful of performers can actually do that. Great, thoughtful answer. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Thomas Machen says, uh, does your agency, that would be AVO, the one you just retired from, um, do they have VO talent outside of L.A.? And if so, where? Like what uh, areas? We do rep actors who um, live in other states and other cities. Sure. Some... Actors we rep while they lived here and they just moved out of state and we don't want to lose that relationship. Sure. Other actors are based in New York and they just say, hey, I need a an extra set of eyes and ears in L.A. And, mm-hmm. you know, with fully fully understanding that New York would be the mothership. Um, there are some actors that just are incredibly successful, but they live in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. and they're going to need a representation wherever they can get. Uh, We rep some actors that split their time between San Francisco and LA. Um, So, and we make it clear to them, this is a job that you have to be in LA for on this date for. So, um, be here, period. No excuses. You know, and (laughs) if you're in jail, break out. (laughs) (laughs) Does the hand holding include getting you out of jail? No, actually, he <laughs> he mentioned something about hand holding. I mean, uh, what does that? What are you talking about? Actors are that? very sensitive, delicate flowers. Yeah, <laughs> some actors, just like agents. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be hard on the outside, but we're even harder on the inside. Yeah. No, the hand holding. Uh, for many respects, if a actor has an account for a long time and they lose it. Uh, they need consoling. Uh, other actors are burnt out after a while, and they need to be refocused. Uh, some actors perhaps haven't booked in a long time. They need to be reassured that they're viable and that someone will love them someday. And by love, I mean put money in their pockets. Right. <laughs> the best kind of love, I think. Correct. In many cases. Uh, and other bit of hand-holding is the tough love hand-holding. Uh, you've been delivering really schmucky auditions lately, and you got to step it up, or I'm not going to put you on my list of people I think about. Mm-hmm. Um, or your home studio really stinks, and it sounds crummy, and it's making me look bad, so you have to come in, or you have to dial it up. Or they can call us. <laughs> Which is the better things to that do. That guy. Yeah. Uh, Tracy Lindley asks, the lovely and talented and a wonderful mother, uh, how can voice talent help bring agencies business? Or any other ways we can help other than be awesome in sessions and don't be stupid on social media? Also, you tell us some horror stories from sessions or things that talent did that were exceptionally good. That's a lot of questions. Yeah, well, she's a <laughs> smart lady. Yeah, uh, I have some talent that uh, every job they book, they just want their agent to handle it. Um, whether it's a little rinky-dink job or a big union job. Uh, it requires invoicing and just keeping up to date. Because mm-hmm. when you have an agent in there, producers tend to... Say, oh, well, you have somebody serious who actually will pick up the phone and grab me out for not paying on time. Um, so for that reason alone, just the 10% fee is more than enough solace for them to have me just do the invoicing for that. Makes them. a lot of sense. And these yeah. are things that they generated on their own through their mm-hmm. website. Uh, a random producer will reach out to them directly. Um or have a previous existing relationship with them, uh, or could be somebody from a creative ad agency that used to hire them 
and now they do casting or they do own a studio instead. I love working with this actor actress. They make it easy. So they contact them directly and then they either say, talk to my agent or I'll just do the scheduling with you because we're friends, but all contracts, all invoices, everything comes to this guy. Yeah. Um, well, now you're retired. Are right, there, yeah, so that's not happening stories? anymore. It's, it's uh, somebody else's problem now. <laughs> Have a horror, horror stories. stories. <laughs> um, uh, one actor was once an hour late uh, because he flew in from out of town and his clock watch was off by an hour. <laughs> Yikes. And the producer was their first time. So after three minutes or four minutes of the actor not being there, she called, she was yelling, she was screaming. And, and I'm like, relax, relax, you know, but I had to take it. I couldn't fight back with her. My actor was an hour late. Right. So, uh, yeah, she definitely read me the right act, uh, as she should have not changing your clock for the time zone is like your dog eating your homework. And I get it. Um, they burned a lot of time in the studio and studios are expensive. So yeah, my actor and I did deserve to get yelled at, although it wasn't purposely done. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another time, I distinctly remember this one. They hired one of my actors for a spot. And I said, are, sh- are you sure you don't mean this one? No, no, no. We mean this one. Are you totally sure you don't mean? Because this is the one who, like, I remember the copy. This this is the one. No, 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 no. This is the one we want. All right. Just so send my actor there. And five minutes after the booking time, I have the actor and the producer both calling me at the same time. Oh, boy. (laughs) And I was like, this is not good. This is not not good at all. Um, Actor said, they don't like what I'm doing, and they're letting me go. And I said, good, you're getting paid for five minutes of work of doing nothing. You're going to get paid. Then the producer's like, your actor sucked. This was totally a bomb. And I was like, I'm sorry. I gave you the chance. And they were like, okay, send me the other one. And I did. But it was one of those times where, wait a minute. Why is my actor calling me five minutes after the session? You better not be late. And then when my secretary said, oh, producer's on the phone. <laughs> I oh, At that moment, I just hope my actor didn't run over his dog in the parking lot or something. you know. <laughs> but that was one of those. It was just like. Two hammers, pow, pow. Not fun. Uh, Gary Lewis says, how does a newbie, this is a long or very short answer, but how does a newbie break into the agency market? Is it just a matter of starting local and just working your way up the food chain? To become an agent, I presume? Um, I guess that's a good question. I would would assume it's from the voice actor's perspective here. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's a tough one. I don't know. Uh, Because I've recruited actors who never worked in voiceover and had a great demo and they've had great careers. Um, and they were all newbies as well, just starting out and they gained success, uh, over the years. Um, uh, just, it has to be a business for you. You have to find the agency that's going to work best for you. If you want to do animation, it has to be a great demo and you target an agency that's very strong in animation. Uh, likewise, if you want to do commercials, strong demo and target an agency that works really strong. Um, you could start at a smaller one and then work your way up. That has happened to me. I've recruited actors and I get them to a certain level. And then they say, I'm done with my high school, sweetie. I'm going to go get, uh, the supermodel. And that has happened and it's a heartbreaker. Mm, Um, so don't do it (laughs) (laughs) to me and you won't. There are a lot more questions. I don't think we can possibly get time for them all. Um, but I think this one is a short but sweet one and maybe could be helpful to a lot of people. This one's from someone that calls himself Sound In Sight. And he or she says, my cover letters to agents are getting stale. What captures your attention? Or captured um, your attention? Make it short and sweet like this sentence. Mm-hmm. Um and it doesn't have to be a zinger or anything. Uh, just be truthful. Um, I'm just starting out. Here's my demo. I would love to meet with you. I'd love to work with you. 
I have a XYZ studio at home. Um, I just booked a big gig. I just booked a big <laughs> gig. And oh, by the way, I'm a senior creative director at Shia Day. And I need an agent because I work my way into the Yahoo account. Or, you know, um, <laughs> short and sweet, I don't, a yeah, yeah, or an really, Apple. Or a I don't need a super, super long... Uh, you're not applying for attorney general. You just mm -hmm. want an agent to, hey, this is what I do. I'm good at it. I want you to see I'm good at it, and I want you to be my agent. Like, there has to be a desire. And I've noticed this where it's like a copied and paste letter, and then my name is in a different font and different size. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. just just make that extra little effort to make it personal to me. Goes a long way. That just see ya. Sorry, it just yeah. didn't do it for me. Yeah. Copy paste. Oh, yeah. Alrighty. Well, if it had I had I had had you not retired, I would love to have you as my agent, but that's not going to happen. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, I'll take that any way I can. On the way out, we just want to say because Jolene said this, um, you know, much success in your writing career will be yeah. following your thank you your exploits thanks yeah can't wait to to read the first novel when it comes out elko thanks for being with us totally tonight. it was great thank you for taking your first day of retirement and just delving back into what you do which is <laughs> they keep pulling nice. me back in just can't get out. i was gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say that <laughs> all right well george and i'll be right back to wrap things up right after this Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Wow, that was great. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been looking forward to meeting Ilko for a long time because we have some mutual friends. And like, oh, you should talk to Ilko. He'll, he knows what's going on. And then he just proved it. So, I mean, the guy is retired, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and still, alone. he came in to talk to us. I mean, that was really cool. We Thank appreciate you, that. Uh, next week on this very show, uh, we have uh, Kristen Lennox and her daughter. I think that's been confirmed that uh, I guess they we both have voiceover careers. She has and a daughter. We'll find we'll out find more out. about we'll, the daughter. I, it'll, Hopefully, it'll be the, interesting. The name. That'd be cool. Yeah, May seventh, <laughs> Keith Farley will be here. Oh, fantastic! He's a great video uh, animation and video games, or more mm -hmm. anim both. Both. We'll find uh, out more. Well, we get I know to he's him. kind of. I should know. I worked with the guy. Sorry, Keith. Try to remember. You know, okay. Uh, May 14th, Dan Nachtrab will be with us. He does narration ah, and promo cool. work. Nachtrab? Nachtrab. Yeah. It's, it's with an A, though. Nachtrab? Nachtrab. Nachtrab. Like Colorado? Okay. <laughs> uh, May 21st, Harry Dunn, who does promos at the CW and probably a pile of other places. Wow. So it's we're like talking a little bit about promo. Agent and, promo. It's like this month is like... It's, that's the Big time, people. All right. Who are our donors of the week? And we are graciously appreciative of them. Oh, man. That we are sense. still getting donations, and because people don't know how to unsubscribe, so they keep <laughs> sending us money. <laughs> no uh, problem. That joke never gets old. <laughs> uh, we got Patty Gibbons and Eric Aragoni. Thanks, and Eric. Andrew Kaufman. I mean, I'm reading these names all the time. It's smart. You get your name out there in the ethers. We say it every week. It's, you know, you send us a little bit of money when you say your name. Amanda Fellows. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. George Whittem. Senior. And that reminds me, that's my dad, by the way. <laughs> Happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday there. My dad's birthday is today. He's so. 27 too, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Flip it and reverse it. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's, um, thanks, dad. Thank you. Brian Page, 
And going back a week or so, uh, ba -ba -ba, what do we got left here at the very bottom here at this list? Shelly Avellino. That's uh. a name from, uh, from our early roots. Yes. And Thomas Pinto. Yeah. Excellent. Um, by the way, if you need help, georgethetech.com. Home voiceoverstudio.com. All righty. Uh, let's see here. We said happy birthday to your dad. Um, <laughs> you have a geek podcast. I guess I'm going to have to start my own podcast too. <laughs> you since do. you've got you yes. know, this and your own uh, geek podcast. Well, yeah, I got recruited into this podcast called the Pro Audio Suite with uh, voice actor Andrew P Peters, a producer from Down Under, Darren Robertson, and our very own Source Element sponsor, Robert Marshall four of us we we it's, we it's a lot of techie stuff and geeky stuff studio stuff gear but then we also get to interview some really amazing talent cool a lot of time they're actors and sometimes they're producers and engineers all right uh show logs uh jack degoli is still writing down everything we say great when you watch the youtube uh, replay of the show mm -hmm. anything that ilko said tonight i was like what did he talk about this when he talked he'll have the time code in there and that's great mm -hmm. so when you if you if you happen to watch the replay that's the place to find it. Uh, let's see here. Um, also, we have a podcast of the show. That's this right. One, this one's going to be a great one. Yeah, if you're I mean, a they're listener. they're all great, but. Yeah, if you're a listener. I mean, if you'd prefer to be listening because the show is long and maybe the timing isn't right for you, listen to it on the podcast. Uh, listen, you know, you can find it on iTunes and Stitcher. Eventually, we might be able to find us on um, Spotify. Oh, Because they're now, cool. now doing, uh, I'm trying to get us on Spotify. They have podcasts now. All right. And if you're a listener. But you want to watch it live. We are doing this show live just about every single Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 930 Newfoundland. Right. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and if you want to be, and if you're in the, in the Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area, and it is great, by the way. Uh, if uh, you're here and you, you're here on a Monday night, you'd like to be here live in our audience, we invite you in here. Just write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and say, hey, I'm going to be in the greater Los Angeles area. And I would like to see the show live because we have actual chairs that you can sit in and, uh, and you get to meet interesting people like George and I and our guests and Jack and stuff like that. Uh, and that's Monday night, 6 PM Pacific time. Uh, we really appreciate it. Show us your booths. This is, uh, this is Ray Valdivino's booth and, and it's actually pretty nice. You know, I'm, you know, he's, he's, he's got the Harbor Freight blankets up. You got to love that. They, they work are, great. They are recognizable, aren't they? They well, <laughs> use them a lot, but they, they're fabulous for, for damping the audio. Uh, let's see here. We need to thank, of course, our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's voiceoveressentials.com. Voiceover Extra. Source Elements. VO to go, go. Voiceactorwebsites.com. And also J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. I uh, need to thank, of course, my wife, Marcy, who's not even here this week. So we could have done the show and she wouldn't have had anything to say about it in the first place. <laughs> She's the one that usually lets the dogs in and out of, right. out of the studio. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curridan, for finding us amazing guests like Elko Drozdowski. Uh, Jack Daniel for doing amazing work in the chat room tonight because there was a lot of questions. And monitoring the prompter. And which is a prompter. little ornery at times. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> uh, and uh, and of course, Jack DeGolly for the show notes. And Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Come visit us, Lee, please. You almost forgot a very, very important person. And Sue Merlino, our amazing floor director, <laughs> who made it she, absolutely perfect tonight. She has put up with some <laughs> frustrating couple of weeks or months, actually. And yes. things have, uh, things I think. Went pretty darn well tonight. All I mean, right. Uh, very happy. Thanks, Sue. Nice, right. nice work. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this particular Monday night, but we'll be back next Monday night. We know this is not an easy business. We try to give you the best information to help you with your voiceover career. Keep practicing. Take those acting classes. Keep asking those questions of us, and we will be here to answer them for you. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday.